Hi everyone, welcome back to the Savant Report. I'm Jordan Weirs, and today we're gonna talk about apartment rents crashing across the country. We're gonna talk about the rental market and what's happening there, some signs of deflation. But before we dive into that, two things I wanna cover with you guys real quick. First, if you haven't subscribed to my free monthly newsletter, please take a moment, go down to the uh, link in the description below at savantreport.com. All you have to do is uh, put in your email address and once a month you'll get a free macro-focused newsletter from me. Um, second is over the course of the last month or so, I've only put out a couple of videos. Now, I've taken that time to work on uh, a couple of personal projects that I have as well as spend time with my family, and I hope you all have been uh, able to do the same thing. Now, I know that my job is to deliver you guys content, but I really want to stress something here. I am not a content creator in that, uh, you know, I don't make a living doing this. I, I really don't make any money at all uh, delivering you guys content on YouTube or anywhere else. This is absolutely a 100% free service. My goal is to educate investors out there, um, to express my opinions and views, to give you guys some interviews with some really, really smart people that I look to for information when I'm looking at investing. Um, last week, I had Timothy Peterson from Cane Island on the podcast. Phenomenal interview, super smart guy. Uh, second time I've had him on, I really encourage you to watch that podcast episode if you haven't already. But you know what, guys, listen, I don't have any program to sell you. Uh, I don't have any you know upgrades or special content. I don't have a Patreon. My goal is only to make you guys better investors and really think about asset classes in a different way. Now, with that said, I don't do videos all the time, which is terrible for my YouTube algorithm and the growth of the channel, but I do it because I wanna deliver you guys real content. I don't wanna sit around thinking about what content I'm gonna create today that might be relevant. Um, this is about me expressing my views, my opinions, my strategies, my thoughts, and uh, I, I don't have that every day. In fact, every couple of days, I don't have this new revelation with lots of content to give you. So when I get new content, sometimes it's a couple times a week, sometimes it's one time a week, when I get content that I believe is really valuable to you, Believe me, I'm going to deliver it to you. Today, I have some content that I think is really valuable, and I want to deliver that to you. Uh, I want to jump into apartment rents. Now, if you guys have done my, um, if, if you guys have reviewed a lot of my podcasts in the past, you'll remember that I've talked about uh, the fact that rents and rent growth and vacancy rates are incredibly important. In fact, it's imperative to uh, holding up values in commercial real estate, in apartment, multifamily real estate, and in residential home real estate. Now, uh, we talked about cap rates and how cap rates work, and at a 5% cap rate, you know, basically for every $1 of net revenue that you lose, you cost yourself about $20 in value on your property. So, you know, this is like a one to 20 ratio and why, you know, even the slightest moves in uh, market dynamics can really affect values of real estate. So we're gonna talk about that here today, mainly surrounding apartments. Uh, I have an anecdotal story I'm gonna share with you, a personal experience of mine uh, here later on in the podcast, but I wanna start with this article from globist.com, great source of information about real estate and virtually all types of, of real estate. Um, they're basically saying that demand for new apartment leases has all but evaporated. Uh, the article went on to, uh, to quote, we've never seen a period like this. Weak demand for all types of housing despite robust job growth and sizable wage gains. Okay, so let's talk about job growth and let's talk about wage gains. We're seeing wage gains starting to moderate 
In fact, we saw a figure last week that I think was around 4.6%, which is slightly below the consensus of 5%. So we're actually seeing wage gains starting to slow down. And let's talk about job growth. I mean, we hit, again, that 3.5% unemployment number. The problem is we have a record low labor participation rate of like 62 or 63%. So yes, while unemployment is low, there's a massive part of the population, over a third, that's not working at all. And so uh, those dynamics, if they are to change, will drastically impact housing and they will impact apartment rents for sure. So let's say unemployment goes from, you know, three and a half to five and a half percent. That is a major and a massive move that will send shivers through real estate of all types, but particularly residential real estate and multifamily real estate. So let's move on to a new article here. Is the housing market slowing um, down from Redfin 2023 predictions? You know, there's some really interesting takeaways here. Um, Redfin, as you know, puts out a whole bunch of very interesting real estate data. In fact, we're going to show you some of that um, uh, here in just a little bit. Uh, but basically, you know, this article is just highlighting the fact that uh, at the end of the day, higher interest rates are simply affecting uh, values and they're affecting sales and sales rates. So, uh, soaring housing and rental rates combined with a tight labor market supply chain issues contributed to outstanding inflation. Uh, they saw uh, prices peak 9.1%, uh, price increases, excuse me, peak 9.1% in June of 2022. But now is the housing market slowing down? In fact, it is. The spiking mortgage rates are definitely making a difference. Um, we're talking about in early December, uh, the 30 year mortgage rate was nearly six and a half percent. Uh, that is definitely below the 18% rates that you saw back in the 1980s, but still it is more than double what we saw just a short time ago. So they go on to give a couple of examples here. For example, consider a $300,000 mortgage with a 30 year fixed rate loan at six and a half percent. Your monthly payment is just under $1,900. But over 30 years, you'll pay $683,000. Um, you know, that's that's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. Uh, at 3% interest rate, you look, you're only going to pay $455,000. So you're talking about a difference of literally almost a quarter of a million dollars uh, that you will pay additionally over the course of 30 years just because of interest rates. Um, you know, home values and long-term shortage, you know, it's really interesting. There continue to be some really, really crazy uh, housing shortage statistics out there. I'm not a believer in it. I do not believe the U.S. has a housing, sh housing shortage. Um, I, I think that there's just been way, way too much demand. So uh, let's go to Redfin's housing pr market predictions for 2023. Um, you know, they talk about Mortgage Stanley saying that house prices could decline as much as 10% between June 2022 and early 2024. Now, I know many of you have been chastising me and critiquing me and criticizing me for saying that I believe that the housing market is going to drop a minimum of 20, 25, as much as 35 or 40%. That really depends on the market that you're in. Um, in fact, this article highlights that while uh, the number appears drastic, it's small potatoes against the market's 40% price jump in early 2020. So really, we're talking about, if my predictions come true, we're talking about just getting back to basically uh, pre-COVID levels. Um, and I think that that is very, very possible. I will also tell you, uh, housing markets across the country are not going to perform exactly alike. There will be some that might go down a couple or few percent, while others go down 35 or 40 percent. Uh, areas like Las Vegas, Phoenix, Arizona, Boise, Idaho, Austin, Texas, these uh, super hot housing markets are very likely to fall much further than the rest. The bottom line is everybody right now is pretty much conceding that uh, house prices are going to go down. In fact, Redfin says overall Redfin expects median U.S. home price 
uh, home prices to drop around 4% to a median of 368, 368,000 in 2023. Now, what does a 4% drop nationally mean in some of these markets that are going to be very, very hard hit? Uh, in my view, I think it's very possible that a 4% national drop equates to four times that, perhaps as much as 20% uh, across some of these very, very, very uh, inflated markets. The ones I just named, Las Vegas, Boise, Idaho, Phoenix, Arizona, I could name uh, several others. In fact, I'm in one myself here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, it's a beautiful place to live. It's incredibly desirable. Um, and it had price run-ups uh, just as much as anywhere else in the country. So let's talk about apartment slowdowns here. Um, you know, new lease rent growth decelerating sharply in October. This is a broader economic signal. This is something that I think all of us should be paying attention to. This is a leading indicator. Okay, now in the past, these uh, REITs, uh, real estate investment trusts, have seen double-digit growth in rent growth, okay? Uh, but let's talk about what's happened in the last quarter or two. Uh, Essex Property Trust, 3% in October, down from 10% in 3Q of 2022. Equity Residential saw a 5% uh, in October, down from 13% in 3Q. We saw uh, UDR, 5%, down from 13%. Camden, one of the very, very big ones, 5% in October, down from 12. Mid-America apartment communities, 6% down from 14. So we are seeing that, uh, you know, rent growth is slowing down huge. Uh, they say that renewal uh, rate growth eased but remains high. Um, you know, we're in the early stages of this. It would not surprise me at all in 6, 9, 12 months from now, to have renewal rates on apartments at record lows. I mean, I absolutely think that people are going to be trading and moving and they're going to be willing to move when they can move for a rent that is hundreds of dollars cheaper than where they are right now. And landlords typically do not want to give giant concessions to uh, existing tenants. Uh, they believe that a lot of tenants, and and you know they, they might be right, a lot of tenants are willing to spend more uh, on monthly rent for the convenience of not having to move locations. And so uh, I think rent renewals uh, are going to go down huge, absolutely huge. So when we put this into context, I want to share a, a personal story of mine with you. Let me put the camera back on me for a moment. Uh, my stepdaughter moved here from Las Vegas just this last year in 2022, and uh, my wife and I had to spend a ton of time out there looking for apartments for her. Very, very diff difficult to find an apartment here uh, in North Idaho. There was huge demand. Apartment rent growth was off the hook. I mean, apartments were costing 15, 16, 17, 1800 a month. Uh, and for a place like North Idaho, that is just some very massive rent. So we uh, we had to get on waiting lists. We looked like crazy. We spent weeks uh, just calling around and trying to find apartments. We finally found one in the apartment complex that she wanted to go into. So we we snagged it immediately the day that it came up. Um, but but let me tell you how things have changed. Now in her apartment complex. Uh, they have 11 vacancies, which is substantial. I would put that up probably pretty close to maybe about 15%, uh, maybe not quite 15%, maybe about 10% of the overall community. Um, and so that's a pretty big number. And now they're offering existing residents a $300 uh, bonus to be paid towards their rent if they bring in a friend or family member to rent one of their vacant apartments. Now, that is a massive concession, $300 concession for an apartment, um, you know, in a, in a mature, grow, uh, you know, grown up market is a very big deal. And that has happened literally in the span of the last five months or so. So, that is a personal anecdotal story 
that just helps you understand the massive dynamic, the massive change. We went from, hey, there are no openings and we have a waiting list to, hey, now we have uh, about a dozen openings and we'll pay you if you send us a renter to rent one of our vacant units. Uh, that dynamic shift in a five-month period of time in a market that's been as hot as this Coeur d'Alene, Idaho market has been uh, is really, really crazy. Uh, all right, let's move on to the last couple of things I want to show you. Um, I've, I've shown this chart here on my channel before. This goes back to uh, early 2019, and you can see that this red line, which is the monthly mortgage payment, has pretty consistently been below the blue line, which is the average monthly rent. Now, now this is a national uh, set of data here, so we're talking about uh, national rents versus national mortgage payments. We're talking about 5% down payments. We're talking about all residential. That's, uh, you know, single family, that's condo and townhomes kind of mixed in there. Well, right now on a national basis, it's roughly 15% more expensive to purchase a home or a condo than it is to rent a home or a condo of equivalent, uh, you know, size and, and amenities. So you're talking about the difference between $2,000 a month and $2,300 a month. Now, $300 a month to your average person is quite a bit. I mean, that's real money. That's uh, a week's worth of groceries. Um, that might be two weeks' worth of groceries for some families. And so that's a big number. Um, you can see when this line crossed was right there in June of 2022, and you can also see that when it started to increase was December 21, which basically means as soon as rates started to increase, uh, the cost of capital became so much more expensive that renting is now much cheaper than buying a home. All right, last article I'm going to leave you with. Um, you know, this is the New York Post. Uh, why is why the used housing market is slowing down uh, at the fastest pace that it has for years? So this article says that the number of pending home sales has plunged thirty two point one percent year over year. That is massive. Additionally, a record seventeen point nine percent of sales fell out of contract during the month. You guys, I'm just here to tell you, that I've and I've been telling you over and over and over again, the data is telling you what is happening to the U.S. housing market, what's happening to rents, and what is happening to the economy. I'm the first one to admit, I can be wrong, and I'll admit when I am wrong, but I will tell you right now that everything that I'm looking at is validating my thesis that we are in for a big bear market in residential real estate, commercial real estate, multifamily real estate. The number of transactions are going to collapse. I don't think it's going to get better anytime soon. I think that we are going to see a multi-year bear market in real estate, certainly well into 2024. I think if you're a buyer, being patient right now is probably a good idea. That's uh, my strategy, unless I find a great deal on a property that I can't pass up. I'm just sitting on the sidelines for the present moment, um, just trying to be very, very careful. One of the things I love about real estate is in any market, you can uh, get a good deal. So am I out there looking for good deals? Yes. Am I trying to buy with both hands? Absolutely not. Uh, now is just not the time to be doing that. If you're a buyer, there are going to be plenty of opportunities to do that here over the next couple of years. But let me tell you this as well. If all of you are waiting to buy this dip in housing or buy the bear market in housing, position yourself to do it because uh, it, you, you may lose your job. Uh, you may you know, see your 401k go down substantially. Uh, you may be working fewer hours. So even though real estate might be a little bit cheaper, things might be tough for you to buy a piece of real estate unless you're really set up and plan for it. So uh, start planning now and just making sure that you've got plenty of reserves, plenty of cash, make sure you've got you know, good cash flow, uh, good employment history, all that good stuff uh, to help you buy the real estate when the time comes. I think that time is coming, um, end of 23, early 24, 
we're probably going to see much, much better deals than what we have on the market here today. Thank you all so much for watching the Savant Report podcast. Don't forget to join my Telegram. There's a link in the description below. You can ask me any questions you want. You can also do that right here on YouTube in the comments and find me on Twitter at Jordan Weirs. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.